NCAA basketball championships. And by Pizza Hut, America's favorite pizza place. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Culligan Water Conditioning. The future calls for Culligan. McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Raven Tire, the Tri-State's tire and auto service leader. And business equipment in Evansville, Henderson, Owensboro, and Harrisburg, Illinois. A crowd of 40,000 in the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis for NCAA Midwest Regional first round action as 16th seeded Fairfield takes on top seeded Indiana. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hoosier Dome. Tom Hammond along with Jim Gibbons ready for this first round game, matching the 16th seed Fairfield against the top seed Indiana. Fairfield 15 and 15 on the season. They finished seventh in the Metro Atlantic Conference during the regular season, but won the tournament to get here. Indiana 24 and 4 and co champion in the Big Ten. We know that Fairfield has a lot of spunk. They came from 18 down to win the conference championship game, but do they have the weapons? It looks like an Indiana mismatch. Well, it does look like a mismatch on paper, Tom. You've got Indiana, a team that many feel will go to the Final Four, and some have picked them to go all the way. On the other hand, as you said, you've got Fairfield, a team that finished seventh in its own conference, 18 points behind, beat Iona to get a chance to be here. But yesterday in the press conference, Bob Knight said one thing. Every team that's in this tournament has won a right to be here, and that's the important thing. And, of course, the Hoosiers need only remember Cleveland State a year ago to guard against an upset. And, of course, Steve Alford, the man to watch for the Hoosiers. Well, there's nothing I could say about Steve Alford that hasn't already been said. He's a career-scoring leader for the Hoosiers, third on the all-time scoring list in the Big Ten. He's the heart and soul of Indiana basketball. And Fairfield led in scoring and rebounding by a native of Illinois, Jeff Gromos. We'll keep our eye on him tonight. First round action from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Fairfield against Indiana. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment, right after these messages. For Fairfield, at a forward, a 6'3 graduate student from White Plains, New York, number 12, Tim O'Toole. For Indiana, at one forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 20, Ricky Calloway. For Fairfield, at the other forward, a 6'4 freshman from the Bronx, New York, number 20, Ed Duncan. For Indiana, at the other forward, a 6'7 senior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Daryl Thomas. For Fairfield at center, a 6'8 senior from Joliet, Illinois, number 35, Jeff Dromos. For Indiana at center, a 6'10 junior from San Clemente, California, number 22, Dean Garrett. For Fairfield at one guard, a 6'2 senior from Freeport, New York, number 23, A.J. Winder. For Indiana, at one guard, a 6'2 senior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. For Fairfield, at the other guard, a 6'2 senior from Paramus, New Jersey, number 24, Ed Golden. And for Indiana, at the other guard, a 6'1 junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number 23, Keith Smart. The head coach for Fairfield, Mitch Wanagero, now in his second year with the Stags, and the head coach for Indiana, Bob Knight, now in his 16th year with the Hoosiers. And there you have the starting lineups for tonight's game. We'll return with the opening tip-off after these messages. The of San Francisco, California. Matchups again. O'Toole, Duncan, Gromos, the leading scorer and rebounder. Winder and Golden starts at the other guard. For Indiana, Callaway, Thomas, uh, Garrett, Alford, the leading scorer, and Smart to round out the Indiana lineup. First meeting between these two schools. Indiana is the higher-seeded team. Where's the home white? 
tallest player on Fairfield's team is the one jumping center at 6'8", and he's really a forward. The rest of their players are all 6'2", 6'3", and 6'4". And Indiana controls the opening tap. The Hoosiers set it up. What about the Fairfield defense? Now, there's a 1-2-2 zone, which Mitch said he was going to go into, and there's a lot of reasons. He wants to spread out IU. He wants to make sure that he gets the tempo to the, where he wants it, and zones tend to slow teams down, and he wants to keep Romos out of foul trouble because they need his scoring. Smart dishes it to Callaway. The short jump for Gary. Taking right up where he left off in the Ohio State game. He's been very tentative since he injured that knee, Tom, but he's playing now with reckless abandon. Here's Gromos, 15 feet from the basket. Indiana, of course, and the Bob Knight trademark man-to-man. -man. Winder straight away. Golden on a wing, guarded by Alford. O'Toole in the paint. up no good. And the foul is going to be called on O'Toole of Fairfield. That's the first personal foul of the game. Here it is again. Well, this kid plays on nothing but heart and soul and guts, and that's all they've talked to. Mitch said he's one of the most amazing stories in college basketball. He gets so many rebounds, and the young man is only 6'3". Indiana with four national championships, making the Hoosiers' 16th appearance in the NCAA tournament. Whistle before the shot got away, and another foul on Fairfield. Romos committing his first and the second against the Stags. Well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all, Tom, if obviously Indiana starts to pound the ball inside because they've got such a great height advantage. They're so much more physical and stronger inside that they're just going to try to get uh, Fairfield in foul trouble very early. Darrell Thomas hits the free throw. He was fouled by Gromos. Those two played against each other in high school, both from Illinois. Thomas from Westchester and Gromos from Joliet. Mitch Bonagaro, the coach of Fairfield, his team down 4 0. He said the first five minutes were going, going to be critical because they couldn't be tentative and get caught up in the IU mystique. Gromos in the low post, back to Duncan, open for the 15 footer, won't go. Rebounded by Thomas of Indiana. See, they've got to hit from outside, Tom, because they aren't going to get anything inside. They're not big enough, so their perimeter shooting has got to be on the first five minutes. They can't fall behind. They're behind now, 4-0, and Indiana has the ball. Now they haven't got the firepower to catch a team. Three-point attempt, no good by Smart. Over the top of the backboard, and out of bounds to Fairfield. Bonagaro in his second year as the head coach at Fairfield, 39 and 22 his record. He was coach, the rookie coach of the year by Basketball Times last year. Taking the Stags to their second straight NCAA tournament. They're lining up in a 1-4 offense and then they're running the flex offense out of that time and we'll get into that about the flex later on. Golden hits the first two for Fairfield. Ed Golden, the senior out of Paramus, New Jersey, makes it a 4-2. Who's your lead? Galloway inside. Garrett, too hard off the glass. Mike Ford, Gromos has it for Fairfield. Stags with a chance to tie the game. On the sideline, it'll go back to Fairfield as Callaway made a diving attempt at the steal. Fairfield wants a score time in the 50s or 60s, a low-scoring game, and that'll be to their advantage because a team can more easily slow down the tempo of a game than the other team can pick it up, and they're not in any hurry. I'll tell you that. They're going to burn as much time every possession as they can. Fairfield only averaging 66 points a game. Indiana hits for 81 a game. Duncan open. His shot no good. Gromos fighting for the rebound with Thomas. Out of bounds to Indiana. Hoosiers come up court with a 4-2 lead. We have played just less than three minutes in this first round game from the Hoosier Dome. Indiana with those 16 appearances, 31 and 11 overall. Last year, the shocking upset at the hands of Cleveland State, something Steve Alford said they'd thought about for a year. Callaway gets, use, uh, gets loose for the basket. That's his second field goal. He has four of Indiana's six points. The Hoosiers up 6-2. 
Trying to back door cut. Winder. Baseline shot no good. Tapped by Gromos. He's got it back and puts it in. Jeff Gromos, who averages 20 points a game, fifth leading scorer in Fairfield history with over 1,400 points, cuts the lead to two. Callaway open for a moment. Move in the paint, he got it. Rick Callaway is off to a blazing start. He has six points. It's 8-4 Indiana. He was playing so well in practice all the time. Tom, then the game started, he stood around and did nothing. And then Bob benched him and started Cruz Smith in one of their games before the Ohio. He came off the bench in the Ohio State game and got 20 points. Tim O'Toole misses from in close. Callaway, quick out, but pass to Smart. And the Hoosier is in front court in a hurry. Alford hasn't shot yet. 15.40 left to play in the first half. Garrett didn't have anything else to do, so he just shot it and missed it. Rebound on the fly comes to Winder. Alford back alone. Winder tries the jam and is fouled by Steve Alford. That's the first Indiana foul. I want to tell you, you had heard at the press conference, and so did I yesterday, when Mitch said, we just don't want to be intimidated, and his people, now what? He's going for the slam duck, and he knew he was going to get hammered. Just didn't get up and get it in the middle of the cylinder, otherwise he would have had a chance for a three-point play. But they said they wanted to prove that they belonged in this tournament, and he said, we're loose, and we made our season already by winning our tournament, so no one thought we would be here, and we've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, and they're playing like it right now. Winder ready for the free throw. He is the second best free throw shooter by percentage in Fairfield history. Shooting 84% this season. Winder is closing in on 1,300 points for his career. Number ninth all time score for the Stags. Gets his first two and makes it a two point game again. 8 6 Indiana. They've quieted the crowd down, having a crowd of some 40,000 here at the Hoosier Dome. The first college games ever played in this facility today. 40,000, most of them in red. A lot of red sweaters. I don't know if Bob Knight gets a piece of that action, but there are a lot of red sweaters. What I want to tell you, the interesting thing is Fairfield's colors are also red, so we were kidding them about that yesterday. They'll come out and see all their red and think a lot of their people travel a long way. Gromos took it away from Garrett, and Fairfield has a chance to tie. Coach Mitch Bonaguro watching from the sideline. Stags run their half-court offense. Golden guarded closely by Alford. Intercepted by Smart. He saves it to Alford. Great play. Alford. And hit it. Rebounded by Fairfield. Here comes Winder in a hurry for the Stags. Winder back out to Gromos from 15. No good. A lot of white shirts for the rebound. Smart takes it down. Smart one on three. He'll hold up. <laughs> Kept his dribble going, though, and can't hit the short jump shot. Thomas battling for the rebound, but it comes down to Golden of Fairfield. Indiana not hitting very well to open the game, though they do have a two-point lead, and Stags trying to tie it. Not hitting very well from the outside, I can tell you. Everything they've gotten has been inside, which is the way they started, but now they've gotten away from that a little, and they aren't hitting from the perimeter. Winder traveled as he made his move. Fairfield just can't stand prosperity. They've had two chances to tie it up and unable to convert. We've got a timeout with 14.04 left in the first half. Timeout on the court with a score. Indiana 8, Fairfield 6. In 15 years, Southern Indiana Tire has grown to be... ...with eight points. Fairfield of Fairfield, Connecticut, six points with 14.04 to play. Neither team burning it up right now, Tom. Fairfield is 2 of 8 for 25%. IU just a step better, 3 of 8 for 37%. Both teams struggling offensively. Both teams playing, I do want to say, very good defense. You know traditionally Indiana is very strong defensively. I think the 1-2-2 two, two zone that Fairfield is using has bothered Indiana a bit. And Daryl Thomas has called for backing in to Tim O'Toole, who went to the court. And Thomas has his first foul. That's the second against the Hoosiers. Bob Knight is up questioning that call. 
In for Fairfield, number 30 is Andy Woodley, 6'10", a junior from Tucson, Arizona, averaging a point a game, the biggest player for the Stags. Also in for Fairfield, number 10, Troy Bradford, a 5'10", sophomore from Hamden, Connecticut. He averages 11 a game. Yeah, Bradford is their best three-point shooter. The reason that Woodley didn't start is because he injured his ankle the other day, and that's why they were curious about whether he was even going to be able to dress. Bradford with a quick shot, no good. Fairfield still can't hit, and Callaway has the rebound for Indiana. Smart baseline jumper, no good. Callaway with a follow, and it's there. Callaway has eight points, all but two of the Indiana total. Hoosiers lead by four, 10-6. Callaway really has carried the offense for Indiana. There's a kicked ball. It'll go back to Fairfield. Smart kicked it out of bounds. Saw that young man early last year in his career time when I was the guy that he was going to be one of the greatest basketball players I had ever seen him. Seen when he went down with that knee injury early this year. Boy, it really hurt their program for a long time. You see Callaway play with a heavily taped right leg. O'Toole had a little trouble getting the handle. Dromos missed everything, rebounded by Smart. Thomas, wide open, laid it in. Darrell Thomas with his first field goal, his fourth point. That's the biggest lead for Indiana. What about the defense Indiana's playing? It was Alford has guarded about four different people already here in the first half. Uh, see, they play that man as aggressively as you can play it, but it's also played with zone principles, and that is the weak side help. But they do a, a lot of switching when they have to. O'Toole managed to save the ball after Indiana went for the steal. See, in the flex offense, Tom, you have a lot of down screens and back screens, and you continually keep turning over the offense, and sometimes you have to, you have to do it. You have to switch. Keith Smart has called for his first foul. That's three against the Hoosiers. Bob Knight. Keith Smart. Making his presence known. Look at Jim Howell smiling at him. He took the earful, earful and then decided he'd move away. And on the other end, Mitch Bonagero. Trying to keep his stags in the game. They trail by six. 12 minutes to play in the first half from the Hoosier Dome. Wilder worked his way free and drew another foul on Smart. That's his second in a matter of about 30 seconds. <laughs> what a look from Bob Knight. Well, see, what they try to do defensively, Tom, is they try to attack what a team does well and neutralize it. And that's what I said. They, they have the best principles of the man, which is pressure on the ball, and the best principles of the zone, which is that weak side help. And boy, they combine those two beautifully. What they also do is force you out of your shooting range. They get you to move out a step or two because they're always overplaying and they get you out of your range. They can really disrupt the team's offense. That's exactly what they do. It's a good way of putting it. Robos is fouled by Thomas. Second foul on Daryl Thomas. And the fifth against the Hoosiers. This time down court, we've had, what, four fouls? We had like four fouls with, I, without, I think, a shot at the basket. And boy, I want to tell you, Coach Knight is really not happy with what's going on. Let's take a look because I saw the slap. Now, I don't know whether he got the hand or, or the arm or not. Now, the hand is part of the ball, and if he hits the hand while the hand is on the ball, that's not a foul, but he must have gotten the arm. Bradford basket will not count. Offensive foul on Troy Bradford of Fairfield. <laughs> Now well, Mitch Bonagiro is having a stroke at the other end. Neither one of them being very objective or very happy about what's going on right now. Bonagiro takes a seat after he solved the basket nullified. Indiana with a ball leading by six. Here's a foul as Callaway goes up. See who they call it on. There were a crowd of red shirts around there. It'll be Tim O'Toole. Second, Second foul on O'Toole. And the fourth against the Stags. O'Toole fouled out of that overtime championship game in the Metro Atlantic Conference in which Merrifield came from behind to beat Iona. Well, they're playing man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds. 
of bounds. The first time they've gone into a man-to-man -man defense. So let's see what all, let's see. A smart shot, no good. And rebounded by Gromos. Usually teams play a zone on the inbound play. Fairfield played man-to-man -man and rebounded the Indiana Miss. Neither team tearing up the nets here in the first half. Six points for Fairfield in nine minutes. Gromos lost the handle. Thomas gives it up to Alford. Sloppy play on both ends here. They went man to man. Winder was going to be the man, and he said, I'm going to hound him for 40 minutes. Darrell Thomas wide open and rattles through. They left him wide open. See, they're gradually sneaking away, and that really makes it tough on a team that doesn't have the firepower, Tom, because then, boy, you've got to start doing things differently, and they just don't have the manpower right now to do that against Indiana. Approaching the midway point of the first half. Bill O'Toole off the glass gets his first bucket. O'Toole needs 17 tonight to, to reach 1,000, the 23rd Fairfield player to reach 1,000. He cuts it back to a six-point lead. Alford got a pick, didn't get his shot away. Smart in the paint is hammered. Foul is called on A.J. Winder, his first foul. And number five now against the Stags. Winder, the second team, all Metro Atlantic selection. Well, that was pretty good recognition by IU right there. And Smart knew that his man had taken his eye off of him, and he made that cut right to the basket, and they got him the ball exactly when they should have. Keith Smart gets the good roll for his first point. Coming in for Fairfield is Ed Duncan, who started at a wing, and he replaces Andy Woodman. Got the roll on the second free throw as well. Also number 24, Ed Golden returns. Here's Ed Golden coming in for Fairfield. And making his first appearance in the lineup for Indiana is Cree Smith, the 6'7 junior from Tipton, Indiana, averages a bucket a game. Darrell Thomas goes to the Indiana bench. Lots of experience, seven for seven on three-point shots, started the Ohio State game, so that won't be a drop-off in production. He'll do a good job for them. Indiana leads by eight, O'Toole finally got the handle, missed the shot, rebounded by Gromos, he gets it. Gromos. 16-10, the Indiana lead. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Alford for three. Steve Alford, who hits 51.2 percent from three-point land, collects career point number 2,303. See, Mitch Panagier just really was upset about that time because you can't let that, even if you're playing a zone, you've got to extend it and get out on a guy like Alford because if he turns it on and gets in a hot streak, you're in a lot more trouble. Outside shot, no good by Winder, and Indiana rebounds. Hoosiers gradually taking control of the game. They have really picked it up offensively. When I say they, I'm talking about Indiana. They were struggling a little. They came out strong early. They went into a dry spell and got out of rhythm and everything, but now they've gotten back into it. They're using good execution and good patience offensively. Hoosiers lead it by 11. Interesting to note that Fairfield playing in the... There's a five-second count. The Stags will turn it over. They are really disorganized. If that guy is within five, within six feet of the man with the ball, the five-second count is on, and they just couldn't get the offense going, and they left him standing there. Nobody came to the ball. And Coach Bonaguero with some words for his team that the timeout is taken with 8.46 left in the first half. Timeout on the court with a score, Indiana 21, Fairfield 10. Love at first sight. Love at first bite. Chelsea's, that charming little restaurant at Lincoln and Green River Road. The Mazda March is on at Kenny Kent with savings on the full line of new generation Mazdas. Imagine yourself in the high velocity RX-7 for $275 a month. The world class 626, family room, power and poise for $190 a month. For the road car of small cars, discover the 323 for only $115 a month. And the number one rated pickup in customer satisfaction is the B2000 for $129 a month. The Mazda March means savings and Kenny Kent is the place to buy. Downtown 2nd and Vine, north at Diamond and Heidelback. Paling Chiropractic is proud to announce the opening of our newest facility in Owensboro. 
If you've had any type of back problem and were afraid you couldn't afford to see a chiropractor, our no-pay plan could put your mind at ease. We're now accepting what your qualifying insurance pays as payment in full. That means you don't have to pay those high deductibles or the 20% that most insurance doesn't cover. Call Paling Chiropractic in Evansville and now in Owensboro. Good evening, I'm Brad Bird. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. 21-10 Indiana leads with 8.46 to go. And that great Indiana defense really disrupting the offense of the Stags, hitting only 29% in the early going. Indiana at a 53%. Here's a whistle as uh, the move made for the basket and the foul on Ed Golden, I believe, as Alford went by him. Golden reached in and committed his first foul. They are really doing Fairfield time a lot of things defensively. They're in a 1-2-2, two, two, and sometimes when the pass goes to the corner, they're jumping into a 2-3, and then they're matching out of that, so they're constantly trying to confuse IU, but this team has a lot of experience, and, boy, they've got a lot of smart basketball players. Alford, the finalist for the Witten Award as Player of the Year, first team All-American for the second consecutive year, and one of the great free throw shooters, of course, on track to be the leading free throw percentage shooter in Indiana history at 89% for his career. See, the thing that I've always respected and admired about him, Tom, is, you know, he didn't get a shot for the first three or four minutes, as you said, but he always lets the basketball game come to him. He just doesn't force things. Indiana enjoying its biggest lead of the game. See, when you play this way, Tom, every possession becomes critical. Every shot, and you've got to shoot a really high percentage because you have so very few possessions. Bromos in the low post, turns, fires, no good. Cap wants no good. Bromos has it again, oh. this time he hits. That was great determination. He missed that shot, he got himself into a position to rebound, somebody else got the first rebound, he went right to the side of the board and got the next one and put it right on the glass. 23-12 the lead. Moved down low and a foul as Garrett hits. The basket will count and he'll go to the line. Well, I want to tell you, if this young man turns it on offensively, he's a force decently. Look at he got a pretty good power move to the basket. You know, junior college players have a tough time making that adjustment to Division I basketball. But I want to tell you, for Smart and for Garrett, it's been even tougher coming into a system like Bob Knight's. Woodley committed the foul. That's his first, a final score. Austin P has upset Illinois, 68-67. That drew a murmur from the crowd of Big Ten fans that was a splash on the board here at the Hoosier Dome. Free throw no good by Garrett. He settles for the two points. It's 25-12 in the end. That has to be the major upset of the day as Austin P knocks off Illinois. I would say so because a number of people thought Illinois had a chance to go to the final four. That shot went in and came back out for a winder and then a foul on the rebound committed by Fairfield. You made a good point. Uh, Fairfield now has to have every shot count and they just can't afford to miss and they're hitting less than 30% for the first half. If you play a low scoring game, obviously, Tom, boy, you aren't going to have that many possessions and each one you can't turn the ball over. You've got to get a high percentage shot. You've got to be shooting very well. Sometimes it's easier to play that way when you're playing at home when you tend to shoot better. But when you're on the road, and especially with a background like this that players and coaches have been talking about the last two days, it makes it a little tougher. And they're not out, a good outside shooting team to begin with. Callaway will shoot one plus one. That foul was the seventh team foul on Fairfield. That's Callaway's ninth point of the game. Honorable mention all Big Ten this year. You remember a year ago he was freshman All-American and the Big Ten freshman of the year. Shooting for double figures. 
You, know, you can see a lot of the same kinds of things in this game with Mitch Bonaviro because he was an assistant at Vill Villanova under Roley Massimino for eight years, and Pete Gillen was an assistant. They're using some of the same kinds of defenses, same kinds of offenses. Pete Gillen, the coach at Xavier, his Musketeers upset Missouri earlier today here in the Hoosier Dome. Burmos had his shot blocked, went back to get it, missed in close. Golden faked about four times, got it down, and is fouled. Boy, now watch. Here is a 6-2 rebounder. Now, people ask you about rebounding. Look at the size in there and watch the guy that's going to wind up with the ball. Only because he had enough desire and determination. And as you said, he pumped about four times because he knew he was in with the Giants, but he got it up on the glass. Foul is on Dean Garrett. The first personal foul in the junior from San Clemente, California. Number six on Bob Knight's Hoosier. Bob Knight has yet to sit down because, boy, those are the kinds of things. He is an absolute perfectionist, as everyone knows, and he just doesn't feel there's any way that that should happen, especially if you're boxing out and checking people. Three-point play by Ed Golden, who celebrated his 22nd birthday on March 9th. Juan Aguero came out of his jacket early. And down the fighting trim over on the turf field bench. His tags trail by 27-15. Yeah, they had a man wide open, and Callaway shoots it all the way over the basket, an air ball. Winder in front court for the Stags. They leave Golden open. Nice fake. He lays it in. You know, there is one thing I can tell you. This club will battle you, Fairfield, for 40 minutes. They really play with great enthusiasm. Alford had a man flash in front of him, and instead of shooting, decided to try to pass it to Callaway, who wasn't expecting it, and it goes as a walking call as the Hoosiers turn it over. Suddenly, Fairfield has a chance to cut the lead down to single digits again. Like uh, Callaway might have taken a finger in the eye as well. 27-17, Indiana. The Hoosiers have never trailed. Romos looking inside, nothing there. See, look at how close all their people are, Tom. They've got about four guys right in the lane. And Winder's shot was blocked. Indiana brings it down. Here's Alford in front court for the Hoosiers. They lead by 10. 5.40 on the clock, first half. Reaching in foul by Woodley. That's his second personal foul, and will shoot one plus one at the Indiana line. Andy Woodley called for his second foul. It'll be Dean Garrett back at the stripe. He has the only miss at the line in the first half for Indiana. He shot nine free throws and hit eight of them. See, the tempo of the game to this point, Tom, it may surprise people. The tempo of the game has been in Fairfield's favor. I honestly believe that Indiana only has 27 points. The fact that Fairfield is not shooting very well, they only have 17. But if they wanted to score in the 50s, high 50s, or low 60s, that's right about where they are right now. Bradford replaces Duncan for Fairfield as Garrett sinks the free throw, his third point. Big Ten Newcomer of the Year. Junior College All-American a year ago at San Francisco Community College. It's 29-17 Indiana with 5.37 on the clock. And what has hurt Callaway a little bit is when Garrett came in, then Thomas came inside and it forced Garrett out, I mean, forced uh, Callaway outside, and he works better inside than he does out on a wing. That's been one of the adjustments he's had to make. Shot missed in close by Whitley. And taken down by Indiana. They just can't buy a basket. Even good high percentage shots. Steve Isle in the game for Indiana. Locked around. Finally put down by Cree Smith. And he's hurt. I didn't see what happened to Jim. Boy, he hit I the basket. And I didn't either. And I don't know whether it's the knee. But boy, he is in a lot of pain. And it's the ankle or the knee. It looks like the ankle. Right ankle is mm -hmm. being examined. Boy, and I didn't see. I don't know whether he came down on somebody else, and that happens an awful lot of times. They land, you know, and they land on somebody else's foot. He took the jumper because I watched him. The ball bounced right out to the middle of the lane. He was right in the right spot, took the jumper. But I didn't. Boy, he is really hurting, and I didn't see the contact after that. I 
I'll tell you one thing. He tried to get up right away. <laughs> and his help to his feet now. And will hobble off the court. Number 42, Cree Smith. Good hand from the fans here at the Hoosier Dome. About 40,000 of them. Into the lineup for Indiana, number 44, Joe Hillman. Joe Hillman replaces Smith. Hillman, a 6'2 junior from Glendale, California. Averages two points a game. Where's number 44 in white? Also, we told you Steve Isle in the game, the sixth man normally for the Hoosiers. 6'6 junior from Hamilton, Ohio. Bradford for three. No good over the top of the backboard and out of bounds to Indiana. He's taken the most three-point shots, as I said, 57. I'm only shooting 33%, but he's their three-point shooter. Timeout with 4.46 left in the first half. Timeout on the court with a score. Indiana 31, Fairfield 17. Nobody rises up in the morning quite the way we do. Crack of dawn will make his kids along. They fresh this morning for you. Wake me up tomorrow. Same time, same place. Ball for shirt. The Hoosiers leading at 31-17 with 4.46 remaining. Fairfield hitting just 29% from the field compared to 53% or 52% for the Hoosiers. They're in a 1 2 2 zone. That ball goes to the corner, then they'll probably drop back into the 2 3. Callaway goes inside. Garrett's turnaround jumper is there. And they just don't have the size inside, Tom, to guard those big people when they get inside. There's just no pressure. I mean, they're pressuring them, but they just can't front them enough, and they're getting good position. 16 point lead for the Hoosiers. Winder drives baseline in the tall timber. He scores. AJ Winder. Winder, who is uh, one of only two players at Fairfield to score over 1,000 points and have 500 assists. Made that would look good. Tapped up and in on the follow. It's Steve Isle for his first bucket. 35-19, Indiana. There's a young man who has been consistent all year for them and has made tons of big plays. He really gives them good time off of the bench. Woodley back out to Golden, 18 footer won't go. Rebounded by Hillman. Here's Isle. Wide open. Galloway couldn't hit it, finally tapped in. I think they're gonna give it to Garrett. Garrett. Yes, Garrett for point number eight. 37-19. Rather obvious time that talent has taken over the last 10 minutes or so. That's what everyone suspected. Fairfield just doesn't have the firepower at either end. Gromos makes, fires short. Rebounded by Callaway. Now they're only getting one shot every time it goes up on that basket. And Garrett off the break gets point number 10. And Fairfield will get a timeout. Coach Mitch Bonagero calling timeout with two minutes, 56 seconds left in the first half. And Indiana has blown the game wild open. The route is on here, a 20-point lead for the Hoosiers here in the first half. It was an interesting irony that Fairfield, when they were getting ready for that Metro Atlantic tournament, getting ready to pay Army in the tournament, saw the movie Hoosiers. <laughs> and the coach said it really fired them up to play. Yep. Now they're facing the Hoosiers in real life. And it's anything but uh, a pleasant experience. Well, IU has outscored them 12 to 2 over the last three and a half minutes. The best chance that Fairfield had was the time of the game, Tom, that they were most concerned about, and that was the first five minutes because Mitch felt that they just couldn't be intimidated and that they just didn't want to play tentatively. And that's when IU wasn't shooting very well either. And if they were going to get into it and jump ahead, that was the time to do it. But they weren't shooting either. Indiana struggled, but boy, they are in sync right now and playing like most IU teams play and Fairfield just doesn't have the firepower that's a good timeout now 
the problem that you have when you're Fairfield is, you know, you haven't got the kind of a team that can press full court. You can't do the kinds of things if you get out of your game plan and get out of your offense. If you're going to sit on the ball every possession for 20, 30 seconds, there's no way that you're going to catch a team that you're down 39 to 19. So it, it puts Mitch in a tough position in terms of what his game plan will be for the next two minutes here and the next 20 minutes in the second half. Good shot of the crowd, mostly in red at the Hoosier Dome tonight. Steve Alford, by the way, the only amateur player to have previously played at the Hoosier Dome. He was on the Olympic team that took part in an exhibition against the NBA All-Stars. And today's four games, marking the first college games and the third games overall in the Hoosier Dome itself. The first game today of four was the third game overall. Foul as Winder makes his move to the basket. And Jim, there's been a lot of discussion today about the temporary floor, which is down here, and about the rims, which are not breakaway rims and apparently are very stiff, and about the shooting background. There's a look at that parquet floor, the temporary floor that it will be used only for this tournament and then sold. Yep, it's a Butler University. You can see the you can see the logo on here and the Butler University right in front of us. But I am surprised about the, the rims not being the breakaways. And yes, a number of the players have been talking about the background and the fact of what they're shooting into. A little bit like the Carrier Dome, I guess, in Syracuse. There's that stiff rim, not the breakaway rim that you usually see in college basketball. Butler University, of course, is the host school for this tournament. Winder hits two free throws. He has six points on the night. It's 39-21. See, there's a change of the tempo. Just what I was wondering. They came right out after the made free throw and put the full court press on. Winner of this game advances to meet Auburn here on Saturday. Auburn a one-point winner over San Diego earlier tonight. Steve just popped in a three as easy as you please. <laughs> Watched him shoot last night at practice, and incidentally, they had 15,000 people here to watch IU practice last night. It was unbelievable, but boy, can he shoot that basketball and effortlessly, just as you said, Tom. He has eight points on the night. It's 42-21. Ramos gives it back to Winder. His shot, no good, rebounded by Indiana's Garrett. Hillman, Callaway, cross court, offered, open, fake, but didn't shoot. You see the clock approaching a minute and a half. Callaway, soft jumper, no good. O'Toole with the rebound. And the Stags will walk it up court, trailing 42 21. They're using that 1-4 offense. Look at how high it is. All the way free throw line extended across the floor. That gives you all that room underneath to try to get the back door. Trobo's jump hook missed everything. And a foul on the rebound on Tim O'Toole of Fairfield. That's his third personal foul. He's the first player in the game with as many as three. The young man that is really the heart and soul of this Fairfield team. He already has his bachelor's degree. He's in graduate school now. He has a bachelor's degree in economics and working on his master's in the communication college at Fairfield. You know, an interesting story about Joe Hillman, Tom. There's a young man that averaged 41 points in high school. Three times in, in games, he scored 52 points, but now he is setting up people rather than scoring, and that's the role that he has to play with this team. And boy, it's not easy to accept that when you're used to scoring 41 points a game, but he's done it. This is the 13th free throw attempted by Indiana in the first half, and they have made 12 of them. Indiana as a team on the season hitting 76.1%, and the free throw shooting excellent here in the first half by the Hoosiers, who lead it 44-21. Interesting you should mention that, because Bob Knight just said the free throw is a big part of what we try to do offensively, and you're right, it has proved that in the first half. There's a collision and a foul. It'll be an offensive foul. Call on Ed Duncan of Fairfield. See if the basket counts. Nope, the charge occurring before the shot. They say no basket. Now, let's take no a look basket. and see whether the ball had been released Charging before the contact occurred. No, afterwards, and that's a good call. Had the ball been released, then the basket would have counted. They still would have had the, uh, the foul, but it wouldn't have been an offensive foul. Less than a minute remaining in the first half with Indiana comfortably in front. Hillman has his shot blocked, and Winder got him on the arm. 
Second foul on A.J. Winder, who doesn't believe it. See, the reason that you're always susceptible to charges down at the other end when I'm saying Fairfield Town because oh, Indiana second. plays such great help defense. Now watch, you're going to see the slap right across the arm right here. See it right on the wrist. Good camera work. You saw it right there because they play such Joe great help defense. The They're always the jumping in front to take that charge. On the other end, they run their offense so great because usually Bob has that four or five touch concept except for Alford that, boy, you want to break down that defense and they make it really tough on you whether you're playing a zone or a man. Gilford missed two free throws. Hillman Boy. missed two free throws, and that uh, brought a murmur from the crowd. They haven't seen many Indiana misses here in the first half. Indiana has outscored Fairfield 17 to 4 over the last six minutes. 30 seconds up in the half. Hey, look, I see him overplaying everybody. They just really overplay the ball. Galloway pulls up the jumper short. Gromos with a rebound. Now Fairfield is two on two, and they lost it. Right to Alford. Winder couldn't handle it. Behind the back pass. Kyle behind the back to Garrett. And the crowd loved it. Box shot with one second left. That one on its way before the horn. It won't go. And Indiana has dominated the first half of play. That's the end of the first half here at the Hoosier Dome with a score, Indiana 46, Fairfield 21. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. This is an NCAA production telecast. We played uh, uh, all 16, 18 feet from the basket now. They got such big guys. And uh, with the little guys, we used to shoot out there like they call the three-pointers. And uh, that's what they got, that rule now, is try to get the thing out from underneath the basket. Do you like the three-point shot? The what? Do you like the three-point shot? Yeah, I think it's going to do the, uh, the good. I really do. I think it's going to do good. Uh, but somebody's got to shoot them. They don't shoot them much out here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think it's going to do some good. Mr. Hinkle, uh, back in your day, as we mentioned, you coached not only basketball, but football and baseball at Butler. Did you ever think you'd see the great specialization that you see in college athletics now with a, a coach for almost every phase of every game? Well, yes. Oh, sure. A specialization makes the thing go. No one man can do every damn thing. You know that. And, uh, but I enjoyed it. It was all right. I, uh, of course, I, you don't uh, have boys now that play in college basketball and football and baseball. They play the one sport. You belong to the basketball coach, you belong to the football coach, or you belong to the baseball coach, and that's all you do. Well, we thank you for being with us and uh, hope you enjoy the games here at the Hoosier Dome. Oh, yes, I enjoy seeing the kids play, and it's very nice. Uh, Indiana has a very fine ball club. And, and uh, got a fine coach, and and uh, things will go. All right, Mr. Hinkle, thank you very much. Tony Hinkle, a longtime coach at Butler University. They play in Hinkle Fieldhouse, named for that man now 88 years old. We'll return with more halftime activities right after this. When I was at Rutgers, the other guard was Jim Valvano, the North Carolina State coach, who, to put it one way, is a little zany. We were playing against Delaware, down by one, with just about two seconds to go. I went up to the free throw line, made one shot of a two-shot free throw. Score was tied, went into overtime. Went into overtime, got the same situation down by one with a one and one. Jimmy comes up and instead of patting me on the back and telling me you can do it, says, you got us into it, now you get us out of it. Being named to the All-American team let me know I could do almost anything. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Elvin Hayes, Wesley Unsell, Jimmy Walker, uh, I feel good about being the fifth member of that team. If a 6'1 slow guard can do it, along with some of those great players, you sort of can set your sights really high. The athletics for me let me pick and choose between 50 or 60 schools and let me pick one as good as Rutgers University. I would have gone, but maybe not to a school as good as Rutgers. This message furnished by the NCAA. Kentucky, famous the world over for the beauty of its thoroughbreds, the excitement in its basketball, and the unequaled flavor of its hickory-smoked barbecue. And right here in Henderson, you can sample Kentucky's most delicious tradition at Greg's Hickory Pit Barbecue. Ribs, 
Chicken, mutton, turkey, all succulent to the taste and comparable to the finest barbecue anywhere. Greg's Hickory Pit Barbecue, continuing the fine traditions of Kentucky for over 40 years. It's Raven Tires Eagle Radio Tire Sale. Most of the world's finest new high-performance cars are equipped with Goodyear Eagle Radio Tires. Equip your car with Eagles for as low as $56.95. Save from $10 to $20 per wheel on Raven's huge selection of mag wheels, including the Western Bullet and Cyclone, Krager GT, and Protect. When it comes to performance wheels and tires, the Tri-State comes to Raven. Raven's we're at halftime at the Hoosier Dome with Indiana leading Fairfield 46 to 21, and my special guest is Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten Conference. Wayne, you more than anyone else in the country, I suspect, have seen the growth of this tournament. I think you were in an administrative capacity when we only had 16 teams. Well, it was something like that, Jim. Of course, uh, probably Walter Byers more than anyone else, but Walter was really the architect of the tournament, and I happened to be his assistant. We opened the doors in the offices back in 1952, and I worked for the tournament for 11 years before I became the committee chairman sometime later. Well, what you've seen the last few years has really got to make you happy, right? Well, it does, Jim. I'll tell you, I think one of the big things that was done, at least during my tenure as chair, we opened the tournament uh, field to a greater number of teams, and like we saw here today, Missouri being upset by Xavier, and our old Big Ten team, Illinois, being upset tonight by Austin Bay. It shows there's great caliber basketball being played throughout the country, and this tournament is certainly a showcase of that. Well, you have to be happy with the uh, the Big Ten Conference this year, Wayne. Ladies you know, a couple of years back, it was the ACC, the Big East. Now it seems that all the power is in the Big Ten, and you've got to be happy about that. Well, we are, uh, Jim. It seems That's like the barometer, though, for a great conference is what you do in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have played great basketball throughout the season. We just haven't got a help in the tournament, we hope to this year. I don't want to put you on the spot, but most every conference has that post-conference tournament. Do you ever see it I, I'm not trying to put you on. Do you ever see it happening in the Big Ten? As a matter of fact, Jim, we have a feasibility committee uh, studying that, and uh, we will have a report sometime this year, and there is a possibility by 1989 we may well be. However, it will be determined by the concept 10 and the organization of Big Ten presidents. Uh, concern for loss of class time, overemphasis on basketball remains to be seen. Okay. Wayne, I really appreciate it. Good luck to the rest of the teams that are left in the tournament. Well, thank you, Jim. Well, they're going to need it. Well, thanks so much, you, and I know what you mean. Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten, our halftime guest, and now we'll go back to Tom Hammond. Indiana leads Fairfield 46-21 at intermission. We'll return for the second half after these messages. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. I wasn't even in the market for a new car when I drove this Pontiac. Then I found that, depending on the Pontiac I got, I could get up to $1,200 back to pocket or use as a down payment. Or I could get 3.9% GMAC financing. Now I ask you, could you pass up Pontiac excitement with a choice of savings like that? Neither could I. A&G, Hendrickson, Hoffey, Klipsch, Kranitz, Medford, Leaguers, Metcalf, Mall, Rice, Wright. Come on in. The Culligan's fine. Mom, do we wash these in hot or cold Culligan? A Culligan water conditioner saves money on soaps, reduces dishwasher spots, too. So maybe today you call it water. But tomorrow? The future calls. Hey, Culligan man. The future calls for Culligan. Look for Culligan in the Evansville White Pages. It's the 1987 NCAA Basketball Championship. From the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Fairfield Stags against the Indiana Hoosiers. Tonight's game brought to you in part by a Rawling Sporting Goods Company, makers of the official ball of the NCAA Basketball Championships. And by Pizza Hut, America's favorite pizza place. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Culligan Water Conditioning. The future calls for Culligan. Kentucky Tourism. Come and enjoy pure Kentucky. Keister's the hardware store and more. And Greg's Hickory Pit, the place for ribs. 
Tom Hammond and Jim Gibbons, about 40,000 in the Hoosier Dome after that first half that saw Indiana dominate. The Hoosiers breaking it open in the latter stages of the half. They outscored Fairfield 19 to 4 over the last seven minutes of the first half. And let's take a look at one of the spectacular plays uh, that occurred in the first half. Watch Indiana on the steal and a little razzle dazzle from the Hoosiers here. Boy, now watch how Steve Alford controls himself. Look at he's aware of everything that's going on in the court. There's the behind the pass back by Isle, and boy, there's the slam dunk right there by Garrett. So the Hoosiers closing the half with a little razzle dazzle. Not many bright spots for Fairfield in the first half, but Jeff Gromos has worked hard. Yeah, now watch him. This is the one we talked about. Watch him get himself into a position right there. He went all the way from the jump shot all the way down to the side of the basket, right in position to get the rebound. And it's been all Indiana. They sputtered a little bit early in the half, but gradually taking command. And as you look at the stats, you will see that Fairfield hitting only 26% in the first half, and that's that suffocating Hoosier defense. That's it, 55% to 25%. Eight more baskets by uh, IU than Fairfield. Fairfield did manage to hit all of its free throws. They were five for five. Indiana shot a lot more free throws in that first half. Three-point shots, Indiana two of three. Fairfield couldn't hit one, and Indiana winning the rebounding battle by two. They've also forced Fairfield into nine turnovers while the Hoosiers have committed only two. Yeah, you won't see Bob Knight's teams make many turnovers. Only 21 points in the first half for the Stags with Golden leading the way with seven. Gromos and Wender with six each. And two for O'Toole who picked up three fouls. And for Indiana, their leading point getters are Rick Calloway and Dean Garrett with 12 apiece. Alford had eight, Thomas had six. Smart with four, Isle and Smith had two apiece. And a Cree Smith, who did have that field goal, you remember came down on his ankle and sprained that right ankle, apparently. We get word from the dressing room that he will not play in the second half. The Indiana faithful all in red with a lot to cheer about. Their Hoosiers, if they could hold the lead, and they appear to be firmly in command, would advance to Saturday's round and meet the Auburn Tigers, who escaped with a one-point win over San Diego earlier tonight. You know, I know it's trite time, and everybody talks about the first five minutes early in a the game. They also talk about the first five minutes at the start of the second half. Let's see how Fairfield is able to respond and see if they can cut that lead down. Now, when you're behind by that much, you don't try to get it all back at once. The one thing you want to do is try to get it under 10, then you try to get it under 5, then you try to win for yourself if you can. O'Toole, Duncan, Gromos, Golden, and Winder in the game to start the second half for Fairfield. Indiana has its original starting five. Thomas, Callaway, Garrett, Smart, and Alford. Gromos got positioned down low and drew the foul from Garrett. And I liked what I saw. Very good patience, very good execution, a very good entry pass right there, and Gromos the went hard to the basket. See, the one thing, as I said, Tom, you try, now let's watch, watch the entry pass, watch the power move. If you've got to try to get it to 10, then to 5, and if you can't do all that, then you say to yourself and you say to your team, let's at least try to win the second half, because there's something positive that can come out of it, even if you can do that. Jeff Grobos is an 80% free throw shooter. As a matter of fact, for his career, he has hit 81.3% in his third all-time in Fairfield basketball history. He said Fairfield now six for six from the line for the game. There's the first miss at jinxed him. <laughs> in the first half, Indiana was 12 of 15 at the strike. 46-22. Callaway shot no good, rebounded by O'Toole. Baseball pass right to Thomas of Indiana. Bad pass from O'Toole. Smart. O'Toole, that's the rebound to his teammate, Golden. Boy, Bob Knight is unhappy because Smart drew the defense. The Gromos lays it in and a foul. The Bob Knight was really unhappy because you saw it. Keith Smart went up for that jump shot. The defensive man came right to him. Look at he's calling, he's calling Keith Smart over. Garrett was wide open under the see, that's what he's telling him. He was wide open under the basket. He took the shot instead of passing the ball for the easy dunk. And that's going to turn into a well a five-point play if he makes this. The two down there and the three right here. Foul was on Callaway, his second. Two team fouls on Indiana in the opening minute of the second half. Gromos completes the three-point play. Fairfield has outscored Indiana 4-0 to start the second half. Winder all alone. He jams. He 
took it away from Alford, and he stuck it. And then Mitch is saying, don't get up there. He, even though they knew they were going to make the basket, he wanted his other four players to get up here and put that full-court pressure on Indiana because he wants to extend the defense. Now, for the basket count. Foul will be on Winder, and the basket good by Alford. A.J. Winder commits his third foul. Here it is again. Now, take a look. There's the head and shoulder fake. He drew Winder right off his feet, and then he forced the contact and finished the shot, and that's what it's all about. Steve Alford will step to the free throw line. He's three of four from the field tonight, and at the free throw line, he's three for three. Alford has hit double figures for the 32nd straight game. 49-27 Hoosiers. Reaching in foul on Alford of Indiana. That's his second. You watch Steve how hard Alford that young man Alford plays on the defensive end. You know that you're not going to play at one end of the floor for Bob Knight, but boy, he really moves those feet and uses those hands defensively. He plays it at both ends. That's what makes him such a great basketball player. Mitch Bonagero trying to get his team back in it. His first child, Michael, was born on March 5th, just three days after they took the title in the Metro Atlantic Conference. Here's a steal by Alford. O'Toole gets it to Winder, who throws it right back to Alford. And it's laid in by Callaway. Another Fairfield bad pass leads to an Indiana bucket. It's 51-27. See, that's another thing that makes him so great, Tom. You know darn well he could have stopped and taken that jump shot right off the glass, but he saw an open man underneath and gave it up to him. Dromos powers it to the hoop. Fairfield bench wanted a foul, didn't get a call, and Indiana has it. Smart in the paint. No good. Dromos rebound. This is kind of the way Indiana started the game. They sort of spun their wheels early. Boy, you aren't kidding. Just a little out of sync, a little out of rhythm offensively. Needless to say, they got it going later and built the big lead. Foul is going to be called on Indiana, and it looked to me as if Ed Duncan threw a four. <laughs> I tell you one thing. Let's, you know, you can move defensively to establish your position. Let's see if he did, and let's see if there's contact right here. What about the forearm, the left arm? Yep, I want to tell you that was pretty close. Let's take another look at the other angle right here. Look at that player is allowed to slide along there, Tom, and gain position. And I thought the combination of that and the forearm it should have been an offensive foul. That was the third foul on Keith Smart. And Tony Freeman comes into the game for Indiana. 5'7", freshman from Westchester, Illinois. O'Toole gets the big guys. He got it. Tim O'Toole. Tim O'Toole playing power forward at 6'3". Two-time captain of the Stags gets his fourth point. Thomas, turnaround jumper, a beauty. Eight points in the game for Daryl Thomas. It's 53-29 Hoosier. See, he's at 6-7, and uh, Tim O'Toole at 6-3 is guarding him, and he just can't get up there. He's playing him as well as he can, but he just can't do anything about changing the trajectory on the shot. 16-40 left in the game. Duncan works his way inside, then loses it out of bounds. It'll go to Indiana. A lot of times, Tom, when teams get this big a lead and it becomes a game of up and down the court, they forgot what got them where they were, and instead of using their offense and staying in rhythm and everything, they start playing a little bit of one-on-one -on -one in that alley kind of backyard basketball, but that's never going to happen with a Bob Knight team. You've got to stay and use the thing that got you the big lead. Coach Knight claiming his eighth Big Ten championship. Alford continues his hot streak. He hasn't shot that much, but he's been right on target when he has, and he has 13 for the game. 55-29, the Hoosier lead. Winder double pumps off the glass for two, and Alford fouled him. 
Winder's making some nice individual moves here in the second half. This is one of them. Ah, one on, oh, see the, uh, the little bit of the push off right there, but look at, he slid right through there, got the ball high up on the glass. That's a good one on one move. And it's the third foul on Steve Alford. Fifth team foul on Indiana. Right ankle being taped over there. That's Bree Smith, who sprained that right ankle in the first half and will not return. Free throw, no good. Rebounded by Garrett. Freeman running the offense now. Alford trying to post up low on Winder. Instead, it comes to Callaway. He can't hit on the floor, and Fairfield has it. Winder sets sail for the other end. Coast to coast. Shot is blocked. Here's Alford. Hoosiers three on two. Freeman, no good. And a traveling call. Indiana turned it over. I don't know how much of the time of the game O'Toole spends on the floor, but it's considerable. <laughs> I tell you, that's what we were... Now, I think if they had it to do all over again, watch the whole play. Big, great block, kept it inbounds. Thomas was on the other wing here, Tom, and I think Knight would have preferred that instead of putting it in the hands of Freeman, he would have put it in the hands of Thomas because Freeman just played out of control just a little bit. And, you know, those kinds of things are going to happen when you're a freshman. And I really understand what the uh, holdup is. The winder is hurt. He's seen the also trainer the right on the end of the bench. I didn't see him get hit. I saw a tool go down at the other end, and he was uh, shaken up for just a second, but I didn't see what happened to A.J. Tom Cook has come in for Fairfield, the 6'6 freshman from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Golden. Gives it up to Gromos at long range. Duncan's outside shot is there. First two of the game for Ed Duncan. It's 55-33 as Fairfield, after hitting 29% in the first half, connecting at a 70% clip here, and Indiana's been around that 50% mark all game. You know, you mentioned it a couple of times, Tom, and I don't want to beat it to death, but both teams are playing so aggressively that I'm seeing an awful lot of people with the ball starting to use their off arm to be pushing people away, so maybe we can take a look for it. I've seen it three or four times in the last four or five possessions. Jim, when you were officiating, uh, how often would you call that sort of screening with the off arm. I think you've always got to protect the man with the ball. Now, if it's the man with the ball is doing it, I think you've also got to protect the defensive man. Nice move by Ricky Callaway. He got the basket and drew the foul. Callaway with an acrobatic move in the paint. Watch it again. Well, here's what made him freshman of the year last year. Look at the great move. Great head and shoulder move. Got hacked, but he was strong enough even though he got hit. Watch, he's going to get hammered right on the shooting arm, but he's going to be strong now. There's the great move. They took it. Now watch him get hit right there, but he still was able to hang long enough to still get the ball up in the glass and the chance for the three-point play. The foul was on Cook, his first. Callaway gets point number 15. He's five for five at the free throw line tonight. I have him with the. Uh, I actually have him with 17 points. Number 12, Jim O'Toole. Tell you, Tom, if he comes back offensively, that is going to be such a big plus in tournament time for IU because you know Alfred's going to score. You know that Daryl Thomas is going to do some scoring. He's smart as capable. That is really going to help them from an offensive standpoint. Dromos at long range. Winder's back in the game, and he lost the ball there. Freeman has it for Indiana. Well, it's a nifty dribbling, but a little pressure. And a reaching in foul called on Fairfield. Our fans love it. Bradford whistled for his second foul, and now Three four against the Stags. Nice. He's watched five seven. Look at a little Grove Trotter move. That's not bad. Now that's pretty good ball control right now. He did get he did get hit right there. We've got a timeout with 14:46 left in the game, and timeout on the court with a score: Indiana 58, Fairfield 33.
passed it to O'Toole. Freeman breaks it up on the other end. Fairfield Stags, the Cinderella team of this tournament, seventh in their conference in the regular season, but winner of the tournament. Bradford missed the shot, and on the rebound, a foul on Fairfield. That was Tim O'Toole, and I want to tell you, he got his money's worth right there. That's his fourth foul, and it comes with 14.32 left in the game. Boy, I mean, he really clobbered Rick Calloway. Tim O'Toole draws the foul for O'Toole Fairfield. O'Toole had over 207 foul. rebounds Five coming into the game, the which was more than his three previous totals. A 6-3 forward, and they're battling with the big guys. He's done a great job. He goes to the bench with four fouls. Thomas gets the drop off the glass, and Daryl Thomas now has 10. 60 to 33, 27 point Hoosier lead. Winder can't get away from Alford, throws a bad pass right at the feet of Golden. Winder dies back to get it and is called for traveling. Now turn it over to Indiana. Sometimes they allow you time to, to slide along the floor with the ball like that, but if you ever roll over or if they ever think you're gaining an advantage, that's when they call the travel on you, and that's what they probably call right there. Thomas gets two in a row. Been a little quiet, hasn't he? Disappeared offensively for a while before the last two baskets really beautifully executed. Jim, at what point will Bob Knight get his reserves in and save some strength for Saturday's game? Yeah, he's got enough people, boy, with enough experience that it won't make any difference. They're still going to be capable. He's got people, of course, Cree Smith won't be able to come back in, but he's got people who have played a lot of ball and have had a lot of time. And when you play in his system, you know, they're still going to be able to operate. Gromos hits for Fairfield. Stag's leading score with 12 points. Gromos across the back committing foul number two. That'll be the 16th foul against the Stags. Jeff had the right idea. Well, there's one of the first substitutions right there, which you call Rick Calloway going out. Calloway leaves, and Steve Isle comes in to replace him. Calloway's had a fine offensive night, 17 points. Hillman goes inside to Isle, back out to Hillman. This time he goes to Garrett, who took a step. Steps. Dean Garrett called for traveling. That'll turn it over to Fairfield. Stags get Tom Cook back into the game. And Duncan goes out. 13 minutes left in this game. First round action in the NCAA tournament at the Hoosier Dome. And Indiana leads at 62-35. The Hoosiers upset the losers in the hands of Cleveland State a year ago. And not about to be surprised this time. Hillman commits the personal foul. Joe Hillman for his first. Joe Hillman whistled for the foul, his first. Just didn't, as he, Bob's sawing him over right now, he just didn't get himself put in a good defensive position, Tom. I think Knight's theory, and a lot of coaches will say, drive him to the baseline because they have less options available to him when they go to the baseline than if you send him to the middle of the floor. But that time, Hillman opened up too much, and he gave him such a good angle that he just lost him and couldn't catch up with him. Gromos gets a rest over at the Fairfield bench. Andy Whitley in to replace him. And the free throw is good by Marvin Walters, the freshman who has checked into the game for Fairfield. Prep All-American, 6-4 out of Philadelphia. Fairfield has been a cardiac club. 23 of their 30 games decided by six points or less. They've won only 10 of those, however, and this one will not be close. 62-37. Thomas. Batted out of bounds by Isle. It'll go to Fairfield. Well, see what happened. He took the jump shot. The last couple he hit from that spot, Tom, and he fell away and didn't go after his rebound. And if he had gone after the rebound, the ball came right out to exactly where he was standing, and that's what he was upset about. Bradford has his shot blocked by Garrett. 
Heil threw it away. Broken up on the other end by Walters of Fairfield. It'll go out of bounds to the Hoosiers. Steve had the right idea because he wanted to get the ball in the middle of the court because he knew there were enough people to fill the lanes. Bob Knight and Steve Alford on the IU bench. Knight is a columnist now, you know. He's writing a newspaper column here at Tournament Time. He said yesterday after the press conference he was going to critique the question. There's journalist Knight. Who would have ever thunk it? Now, <laughs> after his uh, well-documented bouts with the media. Garrett gets the field goal and will step to the line. I'm a little surprised he's putting himself in that position since he thinks, he thinks so little of most writers. He's going to show him how. <laughs> Garrett misses, rebounded by Fairfield. Golden pulled it down and walks it up court. 64-37, Indiana with 12 minutes left. Bradford shot no good. Waiting in to get the rebound is Garrett. And what happened? Foul on Fairfield. Call a foul underneath. I thought he was getting up because Mitch Banagura <laughs> jumped about six feet because he thought his man got hacked at the other end, and I thought maybe they were going to call a technical foul. In fact, he let out a yelp uh -huh. that you could echo that echoed throughout the Hoosier dome. Look at he's still unhappy. He just can't believe it. And that's why I knew you stopped, and that's the same reason I stopped because I didn't see the contact underneath. Foul on Andy Woodley. Foul was on Woodley, and that's his fourth. Number 35, Jeff Gromos back in the very Gromos line. back in for the Stags, and Whitley will go out. Here's Gromos, the native of Joliet, Illinois, and Whitley Eight to the minutes. bench. Gromos, the first team, all Metro Atlantic. Garrett hits the free throw. 15 points of the night for Dean Garrett. That's above his average. 233 rebounds coming into this game, the most... A single player has gathered in Indiana since 1979. Garrett, of course, had the tip in to beat Wisconsin in that great three overtime game and hit a couple of free throws to beat Minnesota as well. And had the Big Ten in blocks with 51. He's had a great year. Loses it. It's kicked out of bounds, actually, by Indiana, so they'll recycle the 45-second clock. Fairfield will have it back. See, they do such an effective job of switching people inside. They're using a lot of down screens and back screens, Tom, but boy, Indiana's right there to cut off the pass every time. I saw Winder with the ice pack. Uh -huh. Their pass break is broken up. This game has been a pain in the neck for Fairfield. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> Gotten to be that time, <laughs> folks, with 11 and a half minutes left and a 66 37 lead. Golden backs his way in against Freeman. Down low, Gromos powers it up. Nice power move Jeff by Gromos. Jeff Gromos. Gromos has had 10 double double games this year. Double figures, points, and rebounds. <laughs> Thomas muscles it in, but it won't count. He's called for steps. Another Indiana turnover. Bob Knight still over there into the game. He hasn't been in that seat much. No, nope. everything is perfection with him. Every turnover, every time they mishandle that basketball, he just isn't very happy about it. It's almost as if he doesn't even know the score. He just looks at the execution of his team. Boy, that is precisely right. Robos slipped away and a foul on Indiana. See, he, he contends that basketball time is really a simple game that you, you simply identify your mistakes and most of the time that's mishandling the ball or a failure to block out or poor shot selection, those three things. And he just wants people to, to operate with perfection. His freshman Tony Freeman has just committed his first foul. Robos will go to the line. Duncan back in for the Stags. Number 20 hit Duncan back in the Stag lineup. Cook will go out. One on one. And here's Gromos again at the line. That was an interesting story we mentioned earlier that he played against Daryl Thomas 
Thomas's high school team ranked number one in the state, and they went into Joliet and beat Gromos's team. And in the second game, Thomas was injured and didn't play. And Gromos hit a last-second shot to upset the number one ranked team. Look where he stands at the side. Uh -huh. Free throw lane there. Boy, you don't see many shoot them that way. But, you know, it's like, it's like anything else if they go in. Do it your way. 66-41, Indiana. Nice fake by Thomas. Missed the shot. Then jammed in. No, they'll wave it off. Offensive goaltending call on Dean Garrett. Now, uh, watch. Watch right now. He's going to... That is a great head and shoulder move right there. I mean, that was a great move. Now, watch the ball on the cylinder right there. You can bring it outside and take it back in, but you cannot touch it when it's on that ring. It's on the rim, and the basket waved off. That was an excellent textbook, and there's a walking call on Walters of Fairfield. That was an excellent clinic on pivot play. He made a great drop step, head and shoulder fake, and did everything but make the shot. Everything he did was absolute perfection. He got that defensive player to react, and that's what you shouldn't do defensively. Obviously, that's what the offensive player is, is trying to get you to do, but you've got to make that offensive player make the first move. A lot of traffic underneath. Thomas can't hit it. Isle misses in close. Out of bounds. It'll go to Fairfield. Ten minutes and eight seconds left in this game. First round action. Already today at the Hoosier Dome, we've seen Xavier upset Missouri. Duke came from behind to beat Texas A&M. Auburn nipped San Diego by one in the thriller. And Indiana airing it out here against Fairfield. Shot no good by Walters. Indiana clears the rebound. That sets up a Saturday matchup between Auburn and Indiana. And Thomas gets two more. Another nice move in. It'll be Auburn against Indiana and Duke against Xavier on Saturday. You notice that Bob has kept his two big people, Garrett and Thomas, in the basketball game. They're doing the scoring. At least Thomas is on the offensive end. They're both getting the rebounds on the defensive end. See the overplay? Isle with a steal. He'll take it all away. You really have to work hard to run your offense because they overplay almost every pass. That's a good timeout by Mitch. Good boy. It's bad enough right now. So we'll take a timeout as well with 9.07 left of the game. Timeout on the court with the score. Indiana 70, Fairfield 41. Love at first sight. Love at first bite. Chelsea's, that charming little restaurant at Lincoln and Green River Road. When it comes to health care coverage, there's one name that's trusted more than any other. But now, there's another name to remember. The name of a new total insurance and financial services group. Well, the Indiana fans have had a field day this evening. The Hoosiers have never trailed, and after sputtering at the start, they've made it a runaway. Just over nine minutes left, it's a 70-41 Indiana lead. Garrett, the only starter still on the floor. Gromos drew a double team and got rid of it outside. Todd Meyer is in the game for Indiana, number 36, eight senior from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. There's a jump ball, Gromos. Down on the floor, though, he's way behind and tying up Meyer in the alternate possession seat. Points in Indiana's way. Well. Did want to say one thing, Tom. People are probably saying, listen, 70 to 41, why in the world would a guy call a timeout right now? But, boy, that's what you do when you're in coaching. He's not only coaching for the last eight or nine minutes of this game, but he's coaching for next year and down the line, and there are things he wants to accomplish, and he's not about to let the time run out without getting it done. And he's got the beginnings of a, a nice program. Up yes, he today. does. Turn around jumper by Garrett. He's been nearly unstoppable in close tonight. He has 18. 72-41. An up and down year for Mitch, but it's been an injury prone year. He lost Romos for eight games. He lost Tom Sequeri, one of his best players. It's really been a tough year for Fairfield. There's Gromos. He's still out there pitching. Gromos now with 18 points on the night. Garrett in traffic is fouled. It'll be called on, I believe, Ed Golden. It will be on Golden, number three. Foul on Ed Golden, his third. And 
Dean Garrett back at the line. Former junior college All-American player and a lot of discussion when Bob Knight brought in the two junior college players, Smart and Garrett, and they've been major cogs in the Indiana success story. See, even though he's substituted freely, Tom, he's got Meyer on the floor, a senior, Isle on the floor, a senior. He's got the experience with Hillman. Garrett's finally coming out. Magnus Pelkowski comes in to replace Garrett, who gets a nice hand. 20 points on the night for Dean Garrett. And that leads all scores. Magnus Pelkowski is a 6'10 junior from Bogota, Colombia. See the score with just under eight minutes left. Reaching in foul, called on Meyer of Indiana, tried for the steal against O'Toole, who's back in. And Meyer commits his first. We'll shoot one plus one. Coach Knight said this was an unusual team and that it was difficult for him to get a good handle on how they're going to play. He said he has enjoyed the team, enjoyed the players, but a little difficult for him to figure out some things. Well, he had to blend those junior college transfers in, and you know, he's always had Thomas and, and Alford right there. Then Callaway got hurt, so he had a problem with that, so it took a while for them to get the blend together, but boy, I think they've done it. They had the losing streak at the end of the year in the Big Ten, but they came back and won the big one against Ohio State. And they won when it counted. O'Toole, one of two at the line. The rebound to Pelkowski. 74-44, 30-point Indiana lead. The issue has not been in doubt for some time since the first half. Nice move by Hillman. Joe Hillman gets his first two. 76-44. Gromo still working hard. Won't go. Rebounded by Indiana. Meyer pulls it down, gives it up to Freeman. Hillman spins, feeds it back outside. Shot no good by Pelkowski. Fairfield with a rebound. Winder will bring it into front court. Coach Knight paid Fairfield a compliment yesterday, saying that one of the most important things a team can do is play well when it needs to play well. That's what Fairfield did toward the end of the season, and especially in the Metro Atlantic Tournament. Well, that's exactly what he said. He said people wouldn't pay any attention to me last year when I talked about Cleveland State and put meeting Fairfield. You're right. O'Toole is fouled and will go to the line. Dave Miner in for Indiana, 6'5 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Isle and Hillman go out. Brian Sloan is also in for the Hoosiers, 6'8 junior from McLeansboro, Illinois. So everybody for Indiana, I believe, has played now. You know, the one thing you know that Bob Knight will say in the press conference about Fairfield and about Mitch is that their kids play hard, that they play together, and they are ready. And that's the sign of a good basketball coach, because these kids have played hard. They were ready, you know, and they play together very, very well. They've just been outmanned, talent-wise. 76-44, Indiana. Winder with a steal. Nice pass to Golden. Can't get a shot away. O'Toole slaps inside and will go back to the line. Jim O'Toole, he's always in there fighting. See, the thing I like about Fairfield also, Tom, is that even though that score is 76-44, they are still running their offense and they're still executing and they're still trying to stay within their system. And I think that's a credit to that. And it's a credit to Mitch because he's not about to let them get out of it. Two shots at the line for Tim O'Toole, paying his final college game. He's 23 years old on the fifth of this month. Missed all of last season with an injury. Was named captain last year, even though he didn't play, and returned as captain for the 86-87 campaign. He has seven points in the game. It's a 76-46 Indiana lead. Just over six minutes to play from the Hoosier Dome. Two 
Freeman on the point as Indiana with all the subs in a little disorganized. Bad pass picked off by O'Toole. He's full speed up court. Spins, puts it off the glass, no good. Romo spatted at it. Finally, it's taken down by Kalkowski of Indiana. Knight, he, does, he just can't stand to see that sloppy kind of basketball, no matter where or when it occurs. <laughs> for these players not many times you get to play in front of fans. walking call by the Hoosiers it'll go Fairfield's way and Coach Knight is still very much in it and a little lecture for Magnus Kokowski Magnus is a fine fine shooter he has a terrific touch he just has a little bit of trouble at the other end with his feet and with his defense before he can shoot the basketball Gromos puts a shot up it's no good and a pushing foul underneath on Fairfield O'Toole, I believe, is fouled out of the game, and the look of frustration on the face of Coach Bonaco. There's Tim O'Toole, and he's getting a good hand from the fans here. They recognize a battler. He has scrapped his entire career, and though he's out talented and outsized, he really gives it all he has. Fouled out with seven points. I'll never forget that overtime game for the Metro Atlantic Championship, the comeback against Iona. He was cheering. He was so intense. Even after he fouled out of the game, he was off the bench leading cheers, and there's no question he's the heart and soul of this team. And that stuff gets to be contagious, you know, and, and that's why I like to watch teams that play with that kind of enthusiasm and kind of mirror their coach, and that's the way Mitch is. Sloan hits two free throws for Indiana. Of course, there are some that say with a haircut like O'Toole's, you have to be tough. 78-46 Hoosiers. <laughs> Less than five minutes left. A double dribble. Double dribble indeed, Jim. That'll turn it over to Indiana. Sure. See what happened. He, he picked up his dribble, Tom, and then everybody ran away from him. And when you pick up the dribble, you, your people have to come to you, and then he got frustrated and put it back on the floor again. We have four minutes, 49 seconds left in this first round NCAA tournament game. Timeout on the court with a score, Indiana 78, Fairfield. Duncan on the back door. Throws it out of bounds. Winder couldn't handle it. Troy Bradford returns for the Stags, and he'll replace Ed Duncan. Duncan with a seat on the Fairfield bench. Many people predicting this Indiana team to go to the Final Four, right? Second or third in the nation, depending on the poll. There's a tap in by Brian Sloan. Pretty relaxed bunch over on the IU bench. With three and a half minutes left. Young man whose dad played and coached for the Chicago Bulls. He came out of Chicago with a great reputation out of Illinois. Golden hits for Fairfield. So Brian Sloan with four points now off the bench for Indiana. 82-48 if you're keeping score. And we haven't been for a while. Shot is good by Tony Freeman. That's his first two. Now under three minutes. Indiana will be a win on Saturday, that's for sure. Here's a foul committed by Dave Miner. They'll be rested, Tom, and yeah, look at <laughs> Still coaching. Yep, he's Dave still Miner coaching, and he's probably also, look at first. look at Boy, you talk about competitive. Yeah, they'll be well rested, and boy, you, you know, you have to realize when you've got 40,000 fans here, and there is nothing but red in this Hoosier doing out, the Hoosier, Hoosier dome, I'll tell you. It's got to be a big advantage for, for IU. It really does. They'll face Auburn here Saturday. Winder's free throw is good. Indiana making its 11th NCAA tournament appearance under Bobby Knight, who's been there 16 years. He's also recorded his 12th 20-win season. Winder misses the second free throw. Scrapped for the rebound and pulled down by Indiana. 
Two and a half minutes left in the game. It's 84-49. Good thing he had the protective goggles on Sloan. He just took a shot to the eye. He sure did, and he would have got it. But, you know, and I've said it before about both clubs, but it is amazing that they have continued to stay in there. Look at, look at this. Just a little word yep. to sum up this game and to start talking about Saturday and what he wants done in the game against Auburn. In fact, uh, the Indiana regulars already huddling up. Look Knight up. walked away from the huddle, but now the assistants have gotten into it, and they're already doing X's and O's for their match against the Tigers. What's your assessment, Jim, of this Indiana team? Can they make it to the Final Four? Can they win it all? Well, I tell you, I've got a list of things, the ingredients that an NCAA championship team has to have. And if we get a timeout and we've got a chance to talk about it, maybe we can kick it around and see how we can match them up against IU. We don't need a timeout. Go ahead now. <laughs> well, I think the first one is coaching. I honestly do. There's a foul on Indiana, on uh, Sloan, I believe. I think a team is an extension of the coach, and you know that they have one of the best coaches in the history of college basketball, too competitive game experience and when you play in the Big Ten strength of schedule I think that's critical I hope you agree with both of those right I think experience with players who have been there before and Thomas and Alford and I think some of the others have had that kind of experience for defense defense and I think that's critical it's too often overlooked and I think in the last 10 NCAA tournaments Tom the teams playing in the final four had a defensive point ratio six to seven points lower than the tournament norm. And you'll notice scores are always lower when you get into the tournament. That's why I think defensive teams always have an advantage. I think you've got to have a real good point guard. Now, Alfred isn't a point guard, but he's a guard, the kind you want, the leader you want. A big man, that may be the one spot where they may be hurting, but they've got Garrett, and he has come a long way. Now, the last two things I've got is quickness, and they've got it, and I think they've got the depth and I think they've got the foul shooting. I think all those things go into the makeup of what I consider to be a championship quality team. And I think Jeff if you match in the end, look at, look at this. I find this amazing, honestly, while the game is still going on, that they're having a squad meeting. But I don't know whether you agree with many of those or not, or whether you think those are the qualities that you would be looking for, but I'm sure they have to go into the equation. They do indeed, and it's a question then of playing up to those potentials right. at tournament time. Certainly difficult to judge tonight's game on that because they simply had a, a mismatch against Mitch Bonagero's Fairfield squad. Locked out of bounds, it'll go back to Indiana. Fairfield just 15 and 15 on the season. And even though they were the Cinderella team playing well at the end of the year, they just can't match up with Indiana. No, there was just no question about it. We talked about it in the pregame that it on paper that it looked like a mismatch, and, and that's what has happened. Not because Fairfield hasn't tried. And when teams don't play well, sometimes, Tom, it's because the other team won't let you play well. And as you said at halftime, which I thought was a great comment, the defense of Indiana just simply took Fairfield out of their sink and out of their rhythm and out of the game, and that's what's happened. That's the reason they're not playing well. Indiana hasn't let them play well. Kalkowski hit the shot for Indiana. Grobo still in the game for Fairfield. Good hit. And a foul underneath. They're going to uh, call it against Fairfield, and uh, long faces over on the stag bench. First. But really, nothing to be ashamed of. You play as hard as you can, and if you get beat by a better team, that's that's all you can do. Give it your best shot. At the line for Indiana will be Jeff Olafat. 6'5", sophomore out of Lions, Indiana. He gets a bucket at the free throw line. I don't know what Indiana is shooting for the night. Probably a pretty good percentage, but in the last six games, time they've shot under 50%, and they're usually a better shooting team than that. But they've been struggling a little bit in field goals. And they sputtered a bit down the stretch in the Big Ten, although they had that big win over Ohio State to cap the season off, and maybe this was just what they needed to get back on track. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it, it's to their advantage that they had it, because I suspect that Purdue may have been sent here rather than IU had IU not won that Big Ten. That was the, the word from the committee, really, was that the 
Michigan defeat of Purdue, and Indiana's win over Ohio State with the difference of coming to the Hoosier Dome or not, the difference between number one seed or a number three seed. Absolutely. 33 seconds left. 90 to 55 is the score. Here's Gromos inside. Powers it up and in. Jeff Gromos. 3 time academic choice in the Metro Atlantic. First team all Metro Atlantic this year. Eighth leading rebounder, fifth leading scorer in Fairfield history and playing his last game for the Stags. Marvin Walters returns for Fairfield. A.J. Winder just went out of town, got a big hug from Mitch. Congratulations from everybody along the bench. He's also a senior playing in his last game for Fairfield. And one of only two players in Stag history to score over 1,000 points and to get over 500 assists. You said he had 1,298 points coming into this game, and that's a pretty good four years. Gromos with point number 21. I guess he's going out now also, yep. And he'll get congratulations as well, including his career, and it has been a sparkling one with the Stags. Ninety fifty-eight with 15 seconds left. Back door, Freeman is foul. Seven seconds left. Got the feet up now. Rich Ferry is second. That young man played at the same high school as Daryl Thomas and Isaiah Thomas. I'm not talking about that young man on the screen. I'm talking about Tony Freeman. Tony Freeman Comes from a pretty good basketball background, and he can really move, I want to tell you. Freeman will have another one. Got them both. Just seven seconds left. but it will not count. It didn't beat the horn. And the game is over. Bob Knight and Mitch Bonagero exchanging uh, congratulations in front of the scorer's table as Indiana wins it. Final score, Indiana 92 and Fairfield 58. And we'll be back for some final comments right after these messages. It starts tomorrow. The Super Sale. At Green Convention Center. Microwave oven, $69. Leather jackets, $29 to $69. Lee, Levi, and Jordache jeans, $8 a pair. The Super Sale. Golf, Spalding, Wilson, McGregor to 70% off. Waterbeds, 50% off. Car stereo, Craig, Pioneer, Sensui, and more to 70% off. Singer sewing machines, $59. Cameras, 50% off. Beautiful fur coats, Ming, Fox, Opossum, and more. The Super Sale. At Green Convention Center. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The athletic director, Ralph Floyd, head basketball coach, Bob Knight, and his staff, and sports information director, Kit Klingelhofer. From Fairfield University, athletic director, Dr. Harold Menninger, head basketball coach, Men Bonagaro, and his staff, plus sports information director, Jerry Zufel. Transportation arrangements made through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. We'll wrap it up and give you some scoring right after these messages. At Pink Furniture, we take the chance out of buying quality sofas. During our Hickory Hill Gallery opening, you can select from any of the sofas in our new gallery. Traditional. Contemporary. Country. In over 500 fabrics at one price, $488. In stock, our custom order. That's right, prices that will leave you spinning. Your choice of sofas, $488. Your choice of style, $488. Your choice of fabric, $488. Plus one year free interest or 5% cash discount. When Fink spins its wheel, you'll always save a small fortune. Fink's, 1109 South Green River Road. It made sense, pre-planning our final arrangements, to control the cost and guard against untimely hardship. Funeral expense is one of the most costly a family must face. Today at Alexander, the cost is easily controlled by making arrangements long before they're needed. To pre-plan arrangements, call Alexander, Evansville's pre-planning center. It's the simplest way of caring, and it's free. Today, everyone has a factory rebate or special interest rate program to offer when buying a new car or truck. We at Wright Cadillac Pontiac GMC Truck offer you all of these. 
But what makes us different is the service, price, and personal attention you will get. With over 100 Cadillacs to choose from alone, you will get the best deal anywhere. Wright Motors puts the fun back into buying a car. Buy the right way. Wright Pontiac Cadillac GMC, 4500 Division, Evansville. Indiana waltzes to victory 92-58 over Fairfield. The Hoosiers advance to Saturday's second round to meet the Auburn Tigers. Scoring in the game for Indiana, they were led in scoring by Dean Garrett. Garrett had 20 points on the night to lead uh, Indiana in scoring. They had three other players in double figures. Callaway had 17, 14 for Thomas, and 13 for Steve Alford. Fairfield had the game's leading scorer, Jeff Gromos, closing out his career with a 21-point performance. The Stags also had uh, A.J. Winder with 15 and Ed Golden with 11. Jim, some final comments on the... IU victory tonight. Well, looking at the score sheet, I would say two big pluses would be the 20 points that they got inside from Garrett because I think they have to get some inside scoring down the line. You know you're going to get it from Thomas and you're going to get it from Alford. And I think the fact that Callaway had his second straight plus game offensively, I think, are two things. I don't want to throw it in your lap, but I was going to ask you. You have seen Auburn a lot of times this year. You know a lot about them. How do you think that maybe they might match up with IU on Saturday? Well, it's really a contrast. Auburn not so interested in playing defense. Indiana likes to get after you man-to-man -man defensively. <laughs> Auburn likes to put it up within 10 seconds that they cross the center line or so, take a lot of quick shots, and Indiana likes to work patiently to get the high percentage bucket. So an interesting contrast in style should make for sort of a, an should. interesting game. It should. Both games should be very good. Duke and Xavier. All right, to Indiana, the easy winner over Fairfield tonight by a 92-58 count. This telecast, a production of the NCAA Communications Department, and we'll return to the Hoosier Dome in just a moment. A 92-58. This telecast, a production of the NCAA Communications Department. The executive producer of NCAA Productions is Jim Marcioni. Tonight's game produced by Willard McDonald. And directed by Lou Renoni. Productions coordinator, Gina McNeil. And our thanks to all the folks who originated four games from the Hoosier Dome today. This one, the nightcap, with Indiana winning it 92-58 over the Fairfield Stags. So for Jim Gibbons, this is Tom Hammond saying so long from the Hoosier Dome. Once again, the final score, Indiana 92, Fairfield 58. This has been an NCAA Productions telecast. Traditions, two new coaches who bring outstanding records uh, to the two schools from previous stints in this tournament. And when they're playing each other in the 8-9 game with number one Georgetown waiting in the wings, there's a lot at stake. Very evenly matched up. You have to think that going in. A couple of outstanding players. One for Ohio State a senior. The other for Kentucky is just a freshman. Well, Dennis Hobson's had a great career at Ohio State, John, but I think when Gary Williams came there and opened the game up to 94 feet, Hobson, the Big Ten player of the year in a great year for the Big Ten, has really prospered. Rex Chapman is setting records at Kentucky as a freshman that all the great Kentucky players of the past have not been able to stand up to. Truly, he's going to become the first freshman to lead his team in scoring. And, of course, Mr. Hobson just happens to be second in the nation in scoring. But you also got to look at the pressure that Ohio State's going to try to put on Kentucky tonight. Kentucky has been a guard-oriented team. Davender, Blackman, and Chapman, three guards. That's been the main thrust of Eddie Sutton. For Ohio State, Gary Williams is 94 feet of pressure defense come from front, side, and behind. Kentucky's guards are going to stand to the test tonight. This is rated a toss-up. The Buckeyes of Ohio State, the Wildcats of Kentucky, back to meet the starting lineups of both teams from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, right after this. For your next IBM typewriter, come to Business Equipment, your authorized IBM typewriter dealer. Select from the complete line of IBM typewriters that make your typing faster and easier. Call one of the Business Equipment professionals today in Henderson, Evansville, Owensboro, or Harrisburg, and find out what a new IBM typewriter can do for your business. Business Equipment in Henderson and Owensboro, Business and Office Equipment Evansville, and Tri-State Business Equipment Harrisburg, Illinois. Nobody rises up in the morning quite the way we do. The crack of dawn will make his kids are all made fresh this morning for you. Tomorrow. Same time, same place. At McDonald's. <laughs> Enjoy any two McDonald's biscuit breakfast sandwiches for just $1.29. Offer ends March 29, 1987.
Why? Hot folks <laughs> ready to trade. Oh, oh, we're just shopping around. This is our first day out. Yeah. Thank Time's you. Your last. Why waste time shopping when the best no. deal in town is right here in your hands? No phone point. Yours free if you sign right here. Some car dealers seem determined to keep you from comparison shopping. Ever wonder why? On the other hand, Keith Slaughter Ford is always encouraging you to shop and compare. Ever wonder why? Compare with us, come stay with us, we're closer than you think. Beep, beep. Ohio State coming in with a record of 19 and 12, an at-large bid, as is Kentucky. 18 and 10 under Coach Eddie Sutton. The Wildcats and the Buckeyes, boy, what great tradition. 15 times for Ohio State in the NCAAs. 32 times for Kentucky, and they have won it a total of five times. Set to meet the starting lineups, and here in the Omni in Atlanta, PA is handled by Marshall Mann. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for this Southeast Regional game at the Omni in Atlanta. At one forward for the Ohio State Buckeyes, a 6'5 senior from Toledo, Ohio, number 32, Dennis Hobson. Kentucky Wildcats, a 6'7 junior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 42, Richard Madison. And forward for Ohio State, a 6'5 sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, number 44, Jerry Francis. And forward for Kentucky, a 6'11 junior from Reedley, California, number 44, Rob Locke. Center for Ohio State, a 6'9 junior from Marion, Iowa, number 41, John Anderson. At guard for Kentucky, a 6'5 freshman from Owensboro, Kentucky, number three, Rex Chapman. At guard for Ohio State, a 6'1 senior from Akron, Ohio, number 10, Curtis Wilson. For Kentucky, a 6'3 senior from Marion, Indiana, number 10, James Blackman. At guard for Ohio State, a 6'0 sophomore from New Concord, Ohio, number 12, Jay Burson. And at guard for Kentucky, a 6'3 junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 15, Ed Davender. Kentucky is coached by Eddie Sutton. Two basketball coaches that really know how to win, and they'll try to do it tonight. Opening round game, Southeast Regional for Ohio State and Kentucky. Back with the opening tip-off from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, right after this. a large pan pizza, please. With sausage. This isn't a Pizza Hut. But it says Pizza Hut. Oh, no, this is the Mobile Institute for Pizza Studies. See, I'm traveling across the country by day, trying to find out why people love Pizza Hut pizza so much. Oh, well, then we'll just use your salad bar. For Pizza Hut, I'm Rich Hall. This is the Omni in Atlanta, Ohio State and Kentucky set to tip it off. Tonight's officials, that's Larry Lembo on the left, Jim Clark in the middle, Jim Garvey on the right. Always put the big man in the middle, right, David? They're smiling now, but they're going to be working hard because Ohio State will play that pressure defense at full court as you see the matchup. And Eddie Sutton's Kentucky Wildcats, their half-court defense is good as you'll see. Ohio State in red, and you can see they have done a number on Kentucky in tournament play. Overall, the series, though, is dead even at 8-8. Eight eight. Kentucky in white with blue. Red uniforms will fight for Ohio State, and chasing down the loose first ball is Jay Burson. Curtis Wilson, the junior from Akron, will bring it up. Here's Burson. They try to go in. 
inside to Hobson. He comes up with it right back to Burson. Starts a move and whips it back outside. This is Francis, Jerry Francis, number 44. The center, John Anderson, along the baseline, looking for Wilson, but he cuts the end line. They turn it over. And we played 30 seconds of the opening half of play. Chapman throws it away. They scramble for it. Possession arrow is not lit, but it should be Kentucky because Ohio State won the tap. You're right. The possession arrow was not lit. Kentucky has it. And there's the pressure you talked about right away, Dave. And they'll vary. At that time, it was full court. They'll drop off it, but they'll play it through quarter. And they're picking up man-to-man -man at half court. 78, the last championship season for the Wildcats, and they score first. That's Richard Madison, who averages nine points a game, getting his first two. Well, Kentucky can establish an inside game. That will be a big plus for them, John. Here's Hobson. His first shot of the night. No good. It's short. The Buckeyes keep it. Francis along the baseline. Spins. Pumps. Puts it up. Missed the shot and drew the foul. And that foul is on Richard Madison. He'll have a talk with Coach Sutton. Nine or 11 straight trips to the NCAAs for Sutton. Of course, the great record at Arkansas. Here you saw Francis with the offensive rebound. Pump fake. Got him up in the air and then rode up through and almost got the three-point ball. And the black armband on the shoulder of the uniforms for Ohio State in memory of Woody Hayes, who died at the age of 74 this week. So few men in sports have been able to leave an incredible mark during their own lifetime. Woody Hayes is one of them. Absolutely. Francis hits a pair for even a two, and we played a minute. Kentucky has an interesting decision. Do they attack this pressure to score, or are they just attempt to get it up? It looks like they're going to go and score. Davender in the lane, his jumper rolls in. So that time, Ed Davender, the junior from Brooklyn, took it all the way. 4-2, Kentucky. That's Wilson. He'll run the offense for Coach Gary Williams. Key matchup is Blackman on Hobson. Quickness against quickness. Person along the baseline. Kicks it out to Anderson, who shoots from the side and scores. So John Anderson with two. 4-4 four, four the score. There's the pressure. Chapman has it. Madison almost led him too long. He's got locked with him. Now he loses the basketball. Burson comes back. It's a three-on-three. Three. Burson rejected by Chapman, who has great leaping ability. Here's Davender at the other end. Against Anderson, lays it in, misses the shot. Locked with a tip, and it rolls in. From out of nowhere, Locke, I don't think he was tipping for a basket, but he got it. It's 6-4 Kentucky. That's a good point, John. I think he was really trying to just keep it alive. Penetration by Hobson goes to the left hand, and it's knocked away. It's an offensive foul on Hobson. So Dennis Hobson from Toledo, the senior, whose average seems to have gone up about 10 points a game each year that he's been here, picks up the foul. He's reveled in the full court game, but I think you'll see every time tonight when he puts the ball on the floor and tries to take it to the basket, you're going to see Kentucky help defense trying to jump in and get that charge. So Kentucky with the basketball. The Wildcats have the early lead. This is James Blackman, the senior from Marion, Indiana, who walks it into four court, goes to Davender. You'll see Chapman work along that baseline, try to pop out to the perimeter. Here he is. Davender. Being guarded by Curtis Wilson. Madison. Off the glass and it bends in. So Madison gets his second basket. Ball stuck up in the net. That was the problem James Naismith had when he invented this game. That's right. <laughs> A nice little two-man game on the side now. Davender back to Madison. Almost has it stripped. Then goes up strong. Kentucky able to establish inside power early. 8-4. The Wildcats lead the Buckeyes. Hobson up along that baseline. Gives it to Anderson who makes a move and lays it in. So John Anderson with his second basket. Knocked away by Hobson. It belongs to Ohio State. There's the pressure. Kentucky has been able to get it in against the pressure, but it's been a little bit of a shaky trip so far. Wilson against Davender. Hobson turns on jump up good. So Hobson's first basket of the night. 
And what you're going to see, I think, is that Hobson, who has good quickness and good power, playing by the guard, Davin, who's going to try to take him inside and post him up in low. Almost another turnover, but Kentucky will get it back. Burson had a hand on it, but he stepped on the end line. So Francis will front Chapman. Throw it away. Here's Hobson. The Buckeyes a chance to take the lead. Hobson almost wow. turned it over. Now Burson lays it off the glass and in. His first basket, the lead goes to Ohio State. It's 10 to 8. Rex Chapman brings it up. Ohio State with a two-point lead. 16-23 to play first half. And the pressure has definitely bothered Kentucky so far. Blackman hits the three-point shot. It looks to me on the early going that if Kentucky can make this game play at the half court, it's going to be much to their advantage. For Ohio State, 94 feet is much to their advantage, but Kentucky will have to handle the full court. Oh, what a great feed. Wilson lays it home. Ohio State is five out of seven so far shooting. They've gotten off to a great start. Kentucky's shooting well. Ohio State has the early lead. Well, These two teams are really red hot right Wilson now. Wilson with the back door cut that time, and Hobson showed you his versatility. Excellent pass. Pass is stripped from him, knocked out of bounds. It's saved. Block knocks it loose. Now Madison has it. They'll reset. Three-pointer chip. Beautiful foul chip, but it does not fall. Anderson committed the foul. See the replay here at the other end. There's Hobson. He gets cut off. Now Wilson right down the middle without the ball. Great pass by Hobson. A little sleight of hand disguise for the layup. At the other end on the replay, John, Kentucky has been very successful in sending guard on the offensive board. They've got three in the game. Jay Burson's got a tough matchup with Blackman. He's given away a lot of size and a lot of strength. And the other end, he's been going so far against another fellow who's much taller than him, Rex Chapman. Both teams five out of seven shooting in the early going. Well, you could tell in the look in the eyes of Gary Williams and Eddie Sutton when they came out here tonight that they knew this game was for real. This is a heck of a way to start the NCAA tournament when these two against each other. Lock in the lane, jumper. Sure. Rebounded by Tony White, the first substitution of the ball game. White into the Ohio State lineup. Down low, Hobson knocked away from him. Ohio State will keep it. Good pass by Wilson. Hobson shouldn't have brought it down that time, but he's very adept working the baseline without the ball. We have played five minutes of this opening half. And right now, Ohio State leads Kentucky by one. Keepsters has what you're looking for and more. The hardware store. We have the best. We always have more. Keepsters. The hardware store. More paint, more housewares, more good ideas, more good advice. Always more for your money that's really nice. 